All right, so let's tie everything together to a reflex arc. A reflex arc uh, could vary in steps, um, but there are some basic things that occur in all of them. Um, so we are always going to have some type of sensory receptor, okay? Then we'll have some type of effector, and then we're going to have some nervous system structures that will connect these two. That is always the same. So let's look at a specific example to kind of help illustrate how all of these tie together. We'll look at something called a withdrawal reflex. So let's pretend that um, this is skin um, in the hand and uh, your hand comes in contact with some uh, fire, ouch, ouch, ouch. And so the dendrites are going to sense that painful stimulus and will send signals to the central nervous system. In a withdrawal reflex, we're looking at the spinal cord. So the spinal cord can actually take care of this entire example. When we look at this a little bit more closely, remember the dendrites are going to receive the signal. It will go to the central nervous system, to the spinal cord. That's what we call the afferent or afferent pathway. It's going to the central nervous system. And when you think back to our structural versus functional classifications of neurons, what was the other name for an afferent or afferent neuron? A sensory neuron. And Sensory and afferent describe the functional classification. What job is it doing? It is sending sensory information to the central nervous system. Let's remind ourselves what the structural classification is then. A sensory neuron or afferent or afferent neuron looks like a unipolar neuron. So if you look at this neuron right here, there's one cell body, one process coming off of that. And so this is a unipolar neuron, a sensory neuron. Why is this bulged right here? It's bulging because this contains all the cell bodies of the unipolar neurons. Do you remember what that term was called from um, another video? Hopefully you're thinking posterior or dorsal root ganglion. The reason why we had that bulge is because it contains the cell bodies of all the unipolar neurons. So hopefully these things are starting to slowly but surely come together. We see here that it will continue to that posterior root and then connect to the posterior gray horn. That sensory neuron will then connect to an interneuron. Remember that interneurons have that multipolar shape. You can see here's the cell body and we have multiple processes coming off of that. Also remember that interneurons lie solely within the central nervous system. So the sensory neuron connects to the interneuron and then the interneuron is going to connect to the motor neuron. That word motor should make us think of the word movement. So remember, all motor neurons have what shape? Multipolar. So this is again going back to that structural versus functional classification of neurons. The functional classification is that uh, for the interneuron here is that we are associating between the sensory and the motor. The functional classification of the motor neuron is that it is going to cause some type of movement. What do motor neurons look like? Well, remember, M for motor, M for multipolar. Motor neurons are also known as efferent or efferent neurons. The reason why I like to mispronounce afferent and efferent and say afferent and efferent is because those two words sound very similar. The afferent goes towards the CNS and the efferent, E for efferent, E for exits, meaning this signal is going to leave or exit the central nervous system. So this motor neuron or efferent or efferent neuron is going to take that signal 
away from the central nervous system and then it will attach to either a muscle or gland in the example where we're talking about a withdrawal reflex it will attach to the effector which would be a muscle the final result of putting your hand on something hot like fire is that this would go along this pathway like that and the motor neuron would connect to muscle cells in your upper extremity and then you would quickly withdraw your hand from the hot stimulus okay i know that was a lot of information um, but i think this video really summarizes much of what we covered within this unit kind of puts everything together um, so make sure that you're taking the time to go back and watch the other videos and then come back to this final video this model and use this example to tell a story and try to put all of this together